yesterday we stopped at number 24. Uh, after, okay, uh, for initially the Buddha were, uh, was reluctant to teach, and then Rama's Ahampati invited him to teach. Because of that, the Buddha surveyed the world, and then the Buddha see, indeed, there are people who can understand the Dhamma. After that, then, the Buddha uh, thinks, who could understand this Dharma? He went to his first two teachers, but unfortunately, two of them has passed away. One passed away a week ago, and the other one passed away just a day ago. Afterwards, then the Buddha thinks, who else can understand this Dharma? Then it occurred to the Buddha, the monks of the group of five who attended a pond while I was engaged in my striving were very helpful. So the Buddha used his divine eye and then saw that they are currently living in Parana, uh, at that moment, uh, living at Varanasi in the Deer Park at Isipatana. Number 25. Then, monks, when I had stayed at Uruvela as long as I chose, I set out to wander by stages to Varanasi between Gaya and the Bodhi. The Ajivaka Upaka saw me on the road and said, Friend, your, faculty, your faculties are clear. The color of your skin is pure and bright. Under whom have you gone for a friend? Who is your teacher? Whose dharma do you profess? The Buddha replied to the Ajivaka Upaka in stanzas. I am one who has transcended all a knower of all, unsullied among all things renouncing all, by craving seizing free. Having known this all for myself, to whom should I point as a teacher? I have no teacher and one like me exists nowhere in all the world. With all these devas, because I have no person for my counterpart, for I am the Arahant. In the world, I am the teacher supreme. I alone am a perfectly enlightened one, whose fires are quenched and extinguished. I go now to the city of Kasi to set in motion the will of Dhamma in a world that has become blind. I go to be the drum of the deathless. Then Ajiwaka said, By your claims, friend, you ought to be the universal victor. The Buddha replied again in stanzas, The victors are those like me who have won the destruction of things. I have vanquished all evil states, devil, upaka. I am a victor. <laughs> when this was said, Ajivaka Upaka said, May it be so, friend, shaking his head. He took a bypath and departed. <laughs> okay, when I read this, I, <laughs> I laugh. Wow, the first time a person met the Buddha. He basically said to him, ah, Tof Hao Shen, shaking his head. <laughs> and then just dismissed the Buddha just like that. I was like, huh? There's the Buddha in front of you and you can just dismiss the Buddha like that. <laughs> but this also, I think, shows to me that even the Buddha is in front of you, if you haven't accumulated enough merits or practice enough of the Dharma, then <laughs> one day if we, meet, if we meet the Buddha, maybe we will react the same way. Ah, this guy, Tophao Sien. 
then we just dismiss the Buddha. Yeah. So I think this shows the importance of accumulating the merits and keep practicing. Yeah. So we are not like Ajivaka Upaka when we meet the Buddha. <laughs> we have in, when we have enough merits when we meet the Buddha, oh, we can welcome his teaching. Also, let's take a look for verse number 28. Ananta Jina. Perhaps this was an epithet used by the Ajivakas for the spiritually perfected individual. Okay. So that's a, just a small footnote here. Okay, finally, number 26. Sister Saikyam, would you like to read? Then monks, wandering by stages, I eventually came to Varanasi, to the deer park at Isipatana, and I approached the monks of the group of five. The monks saw me coming in the distance, and they agreed among themselves thus, friends, here comes the ascetic Gotama, who lives luxuriously, who gave up his striving and reverted to luxury. We should not pay homage to him or rise up for him or receive his bow and outer robe. But a seat may be prepared for him. If he likes, he may sit down. However, as I approach, those monks found themselves unable to keep their pack. One came to meet me and took my bow and outer robe. Another prepared a seat and another set out water for my feet. However, they address me by name and as friend. Thanks, Sister Saikem. Let's take a look for notes number 29. Awuso, a familiar term of address used among equals. So the Buddha doesn't want to, them to address the Buddha as Awuso, as a friend. Why? Because I think, uh, firstly, if they address them, address the Buddha as equal, then they will not respect and learn from the Buddha. If I consider, like, if I talk to my friends and my friends try to teach me, for example, like, uh, or lecture me somehow, I probably would not listen as much compared to if, let's say, a professor trying to lecture me. <laughs> yeah, initially, they don't want to hmm, pay homage to him, yeah, the group of five monks. Uh, but <laughs> uh, if the Buddha likes that, uh, you can sit down if you want, but we won't pay homage to you. However, <laughs> when the Buddha approached, uh, not sure what happened, but they found themselves unable to keep this promise, uh, uh, the pact to not pay homage to him. Number 27, Sister Choi Kwan, would you like to read? Twenty-seven. Thereupon I told them, monks, do not address the Tathagata by name and as friend. The Tathagata is an arahant, a perfectly enlightened one. Listen, monks, the deathless has been attained. I shall instruct you. I shall teach you the Dharma. Practicing as you are instructed by realizing it for yourself here and now. Through direct knowledge, you will soon enter and dwell in that supreme goal of the holy life for the sake of which clansmen rightly go forth from the home life into homelessness. Mm. When this was said, the monks of the group of five answered me thus, Friend Gotama, by the conduct, the practice, and the performance of austerities that you undertook, you did not achieve any superhuman distinction in knowledge and vision worthy of the normal ones. Since you now live luxuriously, having given up your striving and reverted to luxury, 
how could you have achieved any superhuman distinction in knowledge and vision worthy of the normal ones? When this was said, I told them, the Tathagata does not live luxuriously, nor has he given up his striving and reverted to luxury. The Tathagata is an Arahan, a perfectly enlightened one. Listen, monks, the deathless has been attained from the home life into homelessness. Thanks, Sister Jaikon. Okay, so this group of five, they were reluctant to learn from the Buddha. Why? Because they thought that the Buddha has given up on striving and reverted to live a luxurious life. Because they think the performance of the extreme austerities that they are currently doing right now is the way to reach enlightenment. Then the Buddha has to tell them, no, the Tathagata does not live luxuriously, nor has he given up his striving. I am the Arahant, a perfectly enlightened one. Okay. Okay. Uh, sec Sister Aikim, would you like to read next? A second time, the monks of the group of five said to me, Friend Gautama, how could you have achieved any superhuman distinction in knowledge and vision worthy of the noble ones? A second time, I told them, the Tathagata does not live luxuriously from the home life to, into homelessness. A third time, the monks of the group of five said to me, friend Gautama, how could you have achieved any superhuman distinction in knowledge and vision worthy of the noble ones? 28. When this was said, I'd ask them, monks, have you ever known, to me, known me to speak like this before? No, Venerable Sir. Monks, the Tathagata is an Arahan, a perfectly enlightened one. Listen, monks, the deathless has been attained. I shall instruct you. I shall teach you the Dharma, practicing as you are instructed, by realizing it for yourself, here and now, to the direct knowledge, you will soon enter and dwell in that supreme goal of the holy life for the sake of which cleansed men rightly go forth from the home life into homelessness. Okay. Thanks, Sister Aikin. Let's take a look for notes number 30. The change in the dress from friend, Awuso, to venerable sir, Bhante, indicates that they have now accepted the Buddha's claim and are prepared to regard him as their superior. So the Buddha firstly has to explain a second time. And two times not enough. Then the Buddha has to say again, a third time. Yeah. Finally, uh, the group of five uh, regard him as Bhante, Venerable Sir. Now they are prepared to learn from the Buddha. Number 29, Sister Shomi, would you like to read? I was able to convince the monks of the group of five. Then I sometimes instructed two monks while the other three went for arms. And the six of us lived on what those three monks brought back from their arms run. Sometimes I instructed three monks while the other two went for arms. And the six of us lived on what those two monks brought back from their arms run. Okay, thanks, Sister Shomi. Let's take a look for notes number 31. At this point, the Buddha preached to them his first sermon, the Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutta, the setting in motion of the will of the Dhamma, see text chapter 
1.5. Several days later, after they had all become stream mentors, he taught them the Anatta Lakana Sutta, the characteristic of non-self, upon hearing which they all attained Arahanship. See text chapter 9, section 4.1c. The complete narrative is at Win, uh, Winaya 1, 7 to 14. See Nyanyamoli, the life of the Buddha, page 47. This one, the setting in motion of the wheel of Dhamma is what we will read next after this sutta. So the Buddha at that point, more than 2,500 years ago, the Buddha already employs a rotation. Uh, three went for arms and the rest uh, stays back and practice. When the other two went for arms, the other three receives the teaching from the Buddha. So a good practice of rotation. Okay. Next one, Sister Billy, would you like to read? Then the monks of the group of five, thus taught and instructed by me, being themselves subject to birth, having understood the danger in what is subject to birth, seeking the unborn supreme security from bondage nibbana, attain the unborn supreme security from bondage nibbana, being themselves subject to aging, sickness, death, sorrow, and defilement, having understood the danger in what is subject to aging, sickness, death, sorrow, and defilement, seeking the unaging, the unailing, deathless, sorrowless, and undefiled supreme security from bondage, nirvana, the attain, the unaging, unailing, deathless, sorrowless, and undefiled supreme security from bondage, nirvana. The knowledge and vision arose in them. Our liberation is unshakable. This is our last, last birth. Now, there is no more renewed existence. From Majin Ma Nikaya, 26. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, thanks, Sister Billy. Okay, this concludes this sutta. And then the monks of the group of five, instructed by the Buddha, they attain Nibbana. And this is the stop passage when someone attained the Nibbana. Our liberation is unshakable. This is our last birth. Now, there is no more renewed existence. There is sometimes also another line that says, uh, what had to be done has been done. So that concludes the second last sutta of this chapter. The next one, we're going to read the first discourse, the setting in motion, the wheel of Dharma. So far, any questions or comments? I, I wonder why uh, the significance of repeating the fact that uh, he will teach those two who, uh, who remains behind while the, the other three go on for Armstrong or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, why the need to repeat? Just to show rotation. Uh, in fact, in fact, I find the Buddhist suttas. Um, this is something that happens again and again. And some of the suttas will start with like, uh, okay, so he, they tell a story, and and, and then um, the story, the variation uh, is just in one line, but the beginning of the story will be the the, the same, the description. Okay, it could be different, and this could mean stories from different lifetimes. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, For instance, uh, it may be you say they talk about the, the, the story of a sutta, uh, of a Brahma, Brahmin, you know, you on a chariot. Okay, then the next lifetime, there's another story. There'll be another Brahmin, another chariot, or equivalent noble person. Um, and it will be essentially 
the same um, encounter, similar encounter, you know, and the teaching is only very, very slightly. So what I'm trying to say is, why the need to repeat? Ah, uh-huh. well, in that case, actually, Shifu mentioned to me once. Uh, firstly, because last time there was no recording. <laughs> So if you teach one person, uh, the other person might not have heard it before, but he needs the same teaching. Yeah, mm. For example, let's say I talked to Sai Kiang once, and then another day, someone asked me the same question, then I have to repeat the same answer to another person. In fact, I noticed this in, even in Shifu's class, uh, because I attended a lot of Shifu's class, so I recall Shifu teach, uh, answer the same question one time. And then another student that has never attended his class before, some other days, asks the same question. Then Shifu has to repeat the teaching, <laughs> his answer another time. So I suppose that's one reason that okay. could explain. Yeah. And in fact, if you read some Yuta Nikaya, <laughs> you'll notice something. The Buddha is part of teaching. And then some Sutta, they will say, the same teaching. The exact same teaching as this sutta is expounded, but to person A, B, C, D, E. Yeah. <laughs> so that's an interesting observation. Yeah. And a good question. Thanks for bringing that up. But with regards to the rotation, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why uh, the Buddha. Uh, at least the sutta shows the rotation. Maybe just to give some context or some background. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it is to ensure that every student receives the same teaching. Possibly, possibly. The transmission is consistent uh, from the same teacher. Yeah. He, did, he, didn't, he didn't depend on saying, okay, so you three learned it today, so you can tell the other three. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's... No real, no loss of uh, teachings. I, I yeah. think that could be probably logical. Yes, there could be, there could be one reason to explain that. Okay, thanks, Sister Shomei, for the comments and the questions. Uh, anyone else? If not, let's do a dedication. Yen Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Na, Yen De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Na, Pu Yen Zhi Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Here we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Have an unshakable Thursday ahead. Thanks everyone for participating. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.